Coming up on FRC Recap, Animark launches a robot relief program, first releases training on equity, diversity, and inclusion, Band songs of first take a new meeting. We'll dive deeper into the ethos of 2056 OP Robotics, and we'll play Take for Fun Trivia, where our current jackpot is at $70. All this and more coming up on FRC Recap. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also, viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at Loud, Live, and Independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Welcome to FRC Recap, where you get the breakdown and discussion of what's going on in the FRC community. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Olds. And I'm Audrey. Our guest tonight has given Canadian teams 2056 reasons to watch their six in the six. He's a former mentor of 1114 Symbotics and curator of the most impressive win streak in all of first history. Putting the OP in OP robotics since the beginning, it's Tyler Holtzman. To be fair, OP stands for Orchard Park. Just not anymore. It's been true. So Uh, so lots to cover in this show. Let's jump right into our headlines. Um, Our first story is actually breaking here publicly uh, on fun and following up from last week in our discussion with Annie Mark. Uh, So Annie Mark will be launching a robot relief GoFundMe page with the goal of raising $50,000 to provide grants to teams for their robots. Eddie Mark states that on the page that, quote, we will give out 100 plus grants between $500 and $1,000 in the form of a gift certificate to AnnieMark.com. This is the uh, first planned round, uh, or the first planned round is for FTC teams. However, Annie Mark did inform us that, quote, if all goes well, we are thinking of, uh, we'll continue it for FRC next. Uh, so this is a great way to help teams and also help out Annie Mark, who has publicly stated their struggles during COVID-19 outbreak and uh, the impact to their business in the future, which, uh, of course, is greatly in question for all suppliers right now. So if you're interested in helping support uh, Annie Mark and helping support teams, go check it out. The details on how to apply and for how uh, each uh, each team will uh, get their funding is still being finalized. But we will report this as they become available. You'll see the link in chat. And we'll post this as well, too. Uh, but make sure you go check out the uh, GoFundMe. Uh, Andy Mark will be posting more about it on their socials, and we probably will well as well, too, here on Fun. Right. So this past Thursday, First News and Stories sent out an email blast that featured a new training on equity and diversity for coaches, mentors, volunteers, and other key stakeholders. The training is comprised of three 20-minute parts and was the result of a collaboration with the National Alliance for Partnerships in Equity. This joins first handful of other optional trainings for, among other things, voice, mental ability, and unbiased recruitment strategy. As they say in the introduction to the training, first knows that culture shapes our biases and beliefs about people based on their age, gender, race, language, ability, or income level, often without our realization. These resources and trainings will equip us for the work. The course is free and accessible to anyone and live in the resource library now. I did take a look at it, and it seems pretty good resource for your students and your mentors who want to look into that. Tyler? So Lego Mindstorms has a new kit to be released, the first release in seven years. Um, this kit's named the Lego Mindstorms Robot Inventor 515151. This is uh, new elements of the kit, including an IntelliHub featuring six input-output ports and the LEGO Technic and Systems elements. Includes a 5 by 5 LED matrix. Sick LEDs. <laughs> a six-axis gyro. Holy smokes, they can do a lot of stuff with these LEGO robots. New frames, color sensors, distance sensors. Originally slated for an August release, this is delayed to later in 2020 um, due to COVID-19 production disruptions. Uh, but it almost certainly means that FL teams will not w- will not be able to utilize it in the 2021-2022 season. But a lot of cool stuff there. 
just want to follow up on that. We did get a message from uh, Travis2723 uh, who says that the uh, uh, this is actually a retail version of what's called the Spike Prime uh, that was supposed to be legal for FLL last season. So actually, really, it's going to be delayed two seasons overall. Uh, so I'm sure uh, I'm sure FLL at some point is looking for uh, to get something new uh, going on. But uh, hold on to that. Not yet. Uh, apparently, that's not happening uh, as of uh, this time. So. <laughs> Your last control system release was uh, 2013, so seven years ago. Yeah, so crazy. All right, so uh, Hot on Cheap Delphi is a thread discussing popular songs in first that are currently loud that may contain potentially racist or offensive undertones. Uh, songs like this that had been mentioned include Cotton Eye Joe by Rednecks and Apache by Sugar Hill Gain. Uh, funny, we'll talk about uh, a little bit later that in the uh, uh, actual first playlist, they don't call it Apache, which is quite interesting. But uh, other songs uh, that are currently banned, uh, are being pulled in the question as for why they are banned. Uh, songs that are mentioned like Bruno Mars, 24K Magic, Taylor Swift's We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. I know that's Holtzman's favorite song. Are currently banned uh, for some explicit uh, language and sexual undertones. Uh, so first is yet to comment on this. I'm a little bit surprised. We've had, this has been out for a few days now and there's been some, uh, a lot of chat and then first tends to watch CD. So I'm a little surprised not to see comments yet from first in this, but hopefully something soon, especially with their uh, release of uh, equity, diversity and inclusion kits. Uh, we'll dive a bit deeper into the top 20 songs in our discussion segment a little bit later on. Just like to shout out Red Leader again for gifting those subs. Thank you so much. Holy cow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Yeah, if you're watching live, by the way, we love to have your support. Thank you so much to those who are uh, providing subscriptions, tips, and bits. Thank you so much. Okay. Also, with the news and stories email on Thursday came the long-awaited announcement of what the Untitled Food Network show was filming at the LA North Regional this season. First will be featured on the show Duff Takes the Cake, where celebrity <laughs> cake maker Duff Goldman will bring a Star Wars droid cake to life. Sounds pretty interesting. I'm a longtime fan of both desserts and robots, so I think that this development is just the icing on the cake in terms of bringing new audiences to FRC. And Audrey, you're talking about before about the uh, this Millennium Falcon one from a long time ago, so definitely they got yeah. some experience in making this. <laughs> this is my childhood here. I love this Millennium Falcon cake. <laughs> well, that's way too nice a cake. How could cut that apart and eat that? Yeah, I know, but apparently they do. So they... Uh... Have you guys seen this KF console? Most ridiculous thing I have seen in a long, long time. <laughs> um, so many gamers and first are excited for the next gen console releases. You know, new Xbox uh, X series, uh, new PS5. Well, KFC came out with this 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 spoof for the the, the KF console, the, the finger licking good features such as the the chicken chamber, cross platform compatibility, true. 4k 120 fps come on this is uh this is a spicy console slated to power your hunger with an apparent release date of 11 12 20 not sure what the significance of the 11 12 20 is no clue no <laughs> anyways yeah. absolutely ridiculous you're gonna buy one tyler oh hell no i can only eat kfc <laughs> maybe once a year and uh well, you know what? I haven't had KFC in a while. Maybe I will. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> what about you, Audrey? Uh, any interest in getting this? I mean, it does have that, uh, you know, the built-in uh, chicken chamber. I mean, if it runs Breath of the Wild, sure. But other than that. <laughs> it's more Breath of the Chicken, really. But so. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. I I love you know what seeing as somebody who is a social marketer myself. It's so cool to see just like these gimmicks come up. Uh, I don't know, maybe they will make something, but they did come out uh, a while ago with like a dating simulator, like a KFC dating simulator that uh, took off on Steam and had very positive reviews. So who knows what's going to happen as it goes through. <laughs> uh, so uh, with that said, uh, we're gonna uh, wrap up our headlines and just uh, dive into our discussion intros. <laughs> So let's discuss that. And our first topic of discussion is going to be uh, the top songs in the first playlist and the potential future of music on webcasts. Uh, I'm going to start out uh, talking about the future of music on webcasts. And this is something that uh, if you're not too much in the Twitch sphere, you might not have heard of too much. But uh, Twitch has received a plethora of DCMA uh, takedowns uh, for things. And uh, if, uh, fortunately, we haven't really been impacted too much uh, for things. But there have been many, many, many streamers that have been impacted by this. 
and an article by The Verge uh, talking about uh, that Twitch has now decided originally they were taking out a whole bunch of stuff, uh, but they are going to be scanning and deleting uh, clips that contain copyrighted music. Now, if you're watching a first event, First events are going to contain copyrighted music. I mean, that's what the DJs play, get cranked into the uh, speakers. Uh, they go through. And I think this is really unfortunate because that means, you know, for all of us who do uh, create clips uh, for things that they have a good chance of getting deleted. So if you do create a clip, I'm going to tell you, download it right away. Uh, so you can uh, uh, go through it and just make sure you have that. Especially like, you know, we're looking at like, you know, we create clips of the week. Uh, for things and if all of a sudden that contains music in it those could get deleted before we have an opportunity to uh, utilize those as well so uh, interesting thing with that um, as it goes through something that to keep in mind for that but really what, what i want to discuss here is the uh, music playlist um, as it goes through and i'll bring that up here, here in a second but there's a um, if you haven't had an opportunity to look at this it's quite interesting there's uh, top songs uh, that are uh, like a top 50s favorite playlist which we'll bring up on here of uh, songs that are supposed to be played. Number one, Cotton Eye Joe by the Rednecks. Uh, songs that are supposed to be played. Uh, and then the other one, which I was talking about, the Apache song, is actually uh, called Jump On It, which is, I think, the colloquial name for it. But technically, I don't think it's the right name. Um, so something I want to ask you, and, and Tyler, uh, I, I don't know how much an opportunity you had to go through this, but are there any songs that are either on this list or on the band songs of first list that maybe surprised you a little bit? I was surprised at the sheer volume. There's a lot of songs on this list. On the Do Not Playlist? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, many, many, many on here. You know, some of these make sense. I was looking at one. Uh, the one that popped out to me was the uh, uh, BC Boys, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. It says damn in it once, and that gets flagged yeah. for language, apparently. So I'm not quite sure what, what that means on there. So... Uh, yeah, I'd love, love to hear, you know, what's going on with that uh, and where the thoughts are. Audrey, for you, anything that, that has uh, stood out to you in regards to songs that are allowed or songs that might not be allowed in first? I mean, in terms of songs that are allowed, you have so many dance songs on there that are just completely overplayed. Like, I think dance songs stopped being popular about 10 years ago, and we've been recycling the same ones ever since and uh, really hasn't been good for any any sort of major league event uh <laughs> but you see those being used at major league sporting events you see those being used in first events um but major league sporting events have like walk-up songs and things that are specific to players there's nothing that's specific to teams with the songs you can play by the way number 50 is baby shark uh for 2020 Oh. most popular so. <laughs> it's pretty tough to find a, a top 100 song right now that doesn't have some foul language in it yeah and, and, and first events are supposed to be family friendly events so i can understand them not wanting to play um, music that has some foul language and even some of the, like the radio edit versions you still know what they were going to say so mm -hmm. yeah we need, we need more smooth jazz at events <laughs> and, and chat, no, you know, do not need more sweet chats. <laughs> I'd love to hear from chat too uh, before we wrap up on this and what songs are maybe surprising for you. Obviously, there's, there are plenty of songs here that should not be played, right? That, I mean, that's fine. I get that on here. By the way, need to give a big shout out since we're live to Hey, it's Leo who just gifted out another 12 uh, tier one subs. Uh, so thank you, Hey, it's Leo, man. You're cra you guys are crazy today. Appreciate that <laughs> and appreciate your support uh, for that as well. But uh, people in chat saying more dubstep, uh, smooth jazz for the win. Uh, more 2012 dubstep. Uh, play some uh, Tchaikovsky. I forget how to pronounce that name correctly, but classical music on things. Uh, but yeah, it says, you know, I, I, I guess the question is, is who audits the auditors on this? Um, the, the person who creates this is, uh, he's from Canada. It's uh, Nick, it starts with a P. I don't remember his name off the top of my head, uh, but it's on, it's on the amazing site. DJ. Like, yeah, amazing. like he, he is legit. Very professional, has done oh, yeah. stuff, uh, I think, for uh, the, the Astros and, and stuff when they're, when they're up uh, in Montreal um, or some, one of the baseball teams might've been uh, Toronto. Um, and I mean, don't get, and I'm not trying to bash on him or anything for that. I'm more curious on how often this gets audited or, or wh why it gets audited. If you look at the cheap Delphi thread that was created for that, will some of these things be retaken into consideration? That's what I'd love to hear from first is, you know, we first has been talking about all this, you know, equity, diver uh, not diversion, uh, diversity and that sort of thing. 
And I think this is a great place to potentially start for something like that. Uh, and, and I personally did comment in the Chief Delphi thread. I tend not to comment in threads that we're going to be covering for stories. Uh, so you can read my opinion in there as well. But uh, I would love to love to see some changes uh, for for these as well, too, in both ways. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's some songs that are OK to play that, you know, I Tyler, I get your point in regards to. Uh, yes, there's all ages there, but. You know, I don't know. Will I am said TSI MFD to everybody, right? So isn't it everything? Everything's okay. I'm just kidding first, but uh, I'm surprised it, that more yeah. of Will I am songs aren't banned. There's there are some. Oh, isn't I mean, when's the last time you've seen Will I am at a first event? So. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so who knows? But yeah, um, a couple of other comments from uh, chat, and then we'll move on from this. Uh, Max five two five four says the two lists conflict with each other a lot. There are a lot of songs in the recommended list which go against the rules in the band list interesting for that love to see some examples uh, on this as well too um, and space walrus says i'm sure first can probably get some sort of special permission uh to sue songs on twitch to use songs i'm guessing is what the typo is um it really has nothing to do with twitch um in regards to using songs it has to do with what the artists um or more importantly the uh, uh the labels uh for the artists those are usually when dcma complaints come it's either the record labels that go after you or um actually somebody has nothing to do with any of them and they're just trying to get ad revenue on things like on youtube that's a really big thing uh for that as well so it'll be interesting uh as we move through uh, anything else before we move on from this i think we're good so last week we started a discussion about some of the new first at home activities that you could be doing with the resources you have at home to strengthen your engineering and creative skills each week first has released a new challenge for each level of their program which includes a lesson plan design brief and sometimes a video demonstration I read through the lessons available for FTC and FRC students, and I've come up with a top three list of lessons that your team could benefit from. So let's head into that three spot. I'm going to give week six's design brief from the first Lego League challenge an honorable mention here, because honestly, everyone should enjoy some fun. It's based on roller coaster design, and this lesson takes on physics and mechanics uh, to help move a marble across a distance and makes the student think about how they could do loops and bends in a way that supports the marble. It's a good intro to mechanics for younger students who haven't taken physics yet, and honestly, looks downright fun. I might be doing it soon. <laughs> My second rank of FAH activities is the FTC and FRC challenge for this week, escape rooms. They've taken off in popularity in recent years, and rightfully so. They press the participant to think of creative outside-of-the-box solutions much like first, and tackling the thinking behind it requires much more creative and strategy thinking. It also puts this activity right up at the two spot. First, also make sure to include some programming mentality in how the escape room plays together and promotes teamwork in solving the problems. However, hands down, my favorite activity that I read through was the week two FRC and FTC section uh, that gave the student a basic introduction to programming algorithms through cooking. I mean, how many loaves of banana bread have we all collectively made <laughs> over the past two months? <laughs> breaking down the steps to cook is very similar to breaking down steps to complete an action with a robot. And the task here draws that similarity very well. In addition, it's an easy task to get into and do an escape room or roller coaster take time to set up and take down but cooking an everyday activity uh that'll fit well into a regular student's day-to-day -day activities so unfortunately there's no traction behind this first at home movement here the video with week two's lesson has like 30 total views and it's been mm. out for four weeks now will we start to gain traction with these in the first community and what would it take for this program to reach it so Tyler, I, I want to ask you on this as a follow up too. I mean, 2056 has done a lot of your uh, the seminars that you guys have had and posted those to YouTube. Where do you find you know success in those, and how could first maybe implement that as well? Um, so we we hold our our annual fall conference, uh, or at least we have in the past held our annual fall conference, and then we 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 post those uh, conference videos to our our, our YouTube page. It'd be uh, the championship conferences, I believe, used to be um, 
used to be uh, webcast and archived online. Like even just going back and viewing those, go going looking at Karthik's presentation on strategic design, going mm-hmm. and looking at a lot of those um, uh, presentations would be more valuable than than a lot of um, maybe the content that they're they're putting out right now. To be honest. Um, while we're on the topic of our conference, we're not sure yeah. if we're going to be able to hold it. This I was going to ask. So yeah. So in, in the event that uh, that is not able to go on, then we're looking at uh, streaming some of the the, the presenters um, on the various topics, trying to still get them together, but streaming them remotely. We may actually be able to uh, reach a larger audience by doing that than by hosting the conference at our school. So. Um, We'll have to see where we're where we're at. Come I mean, if you're September. interested in using any stream platforms, feel free to let me know. <laughs> so. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll definitely have to evaluate that as as it comes. You know, one one thing I'll say, um, uh, following up in regards to these, like a lot of these, you know, the way they seem geared, I you know, some are are more geared towards younger audiences, some are geared towards a little, a little bit more high school. I'm really surprised the younger ones haven't really taken off. Um, that is what surprised me a lot. However, you know, I did a little bit of research and I went to. Uh, you know, to see like, you know, why what is a video that first makes maybe not taking off for things? And I went to the official first YouTube page and something that surprised me a little bit, and I'm just going to bring this up on screen and I'm not trying to dunk on first or anything like that, but some of the recent videos, pal, I mean, they have 18,200 subscribers and some of these, like they're, uh, all supporting all team members inclusive. This is a great video has 282 views on it and they've done virtually no promotion on things for it. And I think that's really what it comes down to. It's like they post it, but then don't do any marketing behind it. And that really confuses me on, you know, if they're really trying to do that, that great reach for thing, you know, 282, 113, 150, 113 views. I mean, we have videos too that have 115 views as well. Don't get me wrong. But like these things seem to be, you know, like this, this all inclusive members one seems to be a, you know, really great thing uh, for people to learn and, and people to, to read about and listen to. And it just doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of support behind it from first. And so I don't know if that's a cohesion thing on their end between, you know, the people who do the work and then like the people who are supposed to be marketing and promoting and that sort of thing like that. Cause yeah, 35 views on something just doesn't, you know, doesn't seem worth the effort for what they're putting into it. So, and it, and it's good, you know, I personally think overall it's good material. I just love to see it promoted a lot more. Yeah, it's definitely good material, especially as we go into the summer and we have more kids who are stuck at home without, summer camps and those kind of things that have these sort of activities available to them. Um, I also think that part of the reason this isn't taking off is because there's no way to share what you're doing with a larger community other than within your own team. I think this needs to be given a platform to say, hey, look, Mm -hmm. this is the awesome escape room that I made and here's how our team worked together to do it. And for someone else to say like, oh yeah, I wanna do that. Where is that located? Yeah, like some sort of, I, you know, I could actually see from first, first, we'll give you some free advice. So uh, what I could see from that is, you know, first collects those and then creates like promotional material based on that, right? Like, I mean, yeah, it's literally too. free material for them to bring in. Now that can be hard sometimes. Like I, you know, we, at my, the place where I work full time, like we've done campaigns where we're like, here, we'll give you something for free, you know, take hashtag this and we'll use it. And then, you know, the percentage, the conversion rate on that, you know, sometimes is a half a percent. Sometimes we get a whole ton. Sometimes we don't for things. But I, I do think there are there could be great ways to utilize um, some of this, you know, potentially, you know, free. I, I love the idea of, like, let's create something and then create a repository. I mean, hell, maybe we should just do that because that's I think that's a really cool way to promote what's going on in the community. Um, just a, a comment from chat. Uh, uh, Porter Ma 64 says I've reposted them to the local team's Facebook site and get more views there. Um, so something I will mention, um, just about Facebook in, in general, I, that is good. I'm glad to hear that you're getting more reach for that. A Facebook view is not nearly as valuable as a YouTube view. Um, and the reason for that is, is that Facebook counts a view. Um, it's, it has been two to three seconds for a long time. I've heard they've been changed, might change it to 10, but YouTube, uh, YouTube's algorithm, while it doesn't clearly define it, the general consensus is that a view is 30 to 60 seconds of, of content. So a lot of times on YouTube views or Facebook views in the past, you just scrolling by and stopping for two seconds counts as a view. Um, so take that with a little bit of grain of salt. Like when we do things on fun, the reason we don't post on Facebook is that the reason because advertisers don't find as much value in something like that. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do that, but just keep in mind that's why view counts might be different. Okay. Yeah. 
Let's move We're on to our, end uh, that with uh, Tyler yeah. nerding out over there. Sorry. You know. <laughs> All right. So let's make our way over to our guest discussion now. Tyler, for years, 2056 has built simple machines that perform at the highest levels of competitions. How does OP figure out what to do to build and how to build it? Let's talk about simplicity and success on 2056. So the question really boils down to, to two, two big things. And the first one is figuring out what you want to build. The second thing is figuring out how you're going to build it. Though what you're going to build, you, you have to first analyze what your team is capable of. And it takes, it takes a great deal of uh, maturity and experience to actually know what your team is capable of. Um, you have to know what your resources are. You have to know what your technical strengths are. You have to know what your technical weaknesses are. You have to know all of this stuff about what your team can and cannot do. Um, and strategic design is something that's been discussed you know, at length in first. There's a lot of people who um, are probably better at it than me, but and better at it certainly than explaining. But you have to, number one, read and analyze the rules. Know what it is that you're trying to do and then figure out the best way for your team to maximize their chances of um, being successful. So uh, for us, we put a lot of emphasis on uh, seeding and qualification. Um, so the last number of years, we've been chasing those uh, extra ranking points that are on offer. Um, and we do that because we feel that the, the best way for us to win tournaments is to uh, control our own destiny leading into the elimination rounds. So um, we're putting emphasis in our machine on earning those extra ranking points. Now, those extra ranking points are not easy. They're not, you know, just giving those things away. So you have to have um, a good understanding of what your team is capable of and then coming up with a robot architecture that will um, achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve. Um, there's, there's really no, like, magic sauce here. It, it really just comes down to a lot of uh, experience um, and coming up with, not coming up with, understanding how the game is going to be played without ever having seen it played. Um, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. And, you know, looking at uh, something I guess asking, by the way, Chad, if you do have any questions for Tyler, uh, we do have a few minutes for that as well, too. Um, but when you guys look at things like, you know, something that when I, you know, we have the privilege of being able to speak to you every year and go down to the behind the bumper. So I love, I love doing those with you guys. Um, but something that always strikes me about your robots is that, yeah, it's a very complex machine, but it seems like overall it's, it's simple in its aspect of things. And how do you approach doing, doing that where you're like, Hey, like, yeah, we want to do all these things, but we need to start somewhere and keep iterating past that. Like what, what's, what's the process or the thought process that goes behind that? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one to answer too. Like the, the the architecture itself needs to be simple, the the the, the machine architecture. Like if your basic robot concept is complicated from the onset, then you're doing something wrong already. Like um, the machines that we're building, they're not going to the moon. Like they don't need to be grossly complicated. The majority of of game challenges you can achieve with you know, a simple linear elevator or a single jointed arm or um, whatever your simple mechanism of choice is going to be, a linear conveyor. Like we saw um, the EveryBot concept this year was, it was amazing. It was rollers on a single jointed arm that went up and down and a hook that went up to grab the bar. And that, and that was pretty much it. And like the EveryBot concept for the last, well, since they've started has been this phenomenal concept that is incredibly simple um and is still like a 70th percentile team it, it it's like it's insane the number of teams that build robots that are worse than every bot and and still show up like 
that should be like the measure of success in first. You're better or worse than everybody. Like, <laughs> it, it's crazy. Um, yeah, the, the concept has to be simple. Um, and coming up with that architecture that's simple, there, there's no like, there's no magic sauce for that. It's just, it's experience. It's seeing a lot of other robots in the past that have worked and similar concepts and and, and leaning on, on on some of those. Um, yeah, this this robot is amazing. I, I I don't understand why everyone didn't build this. I mean, it, is a, me it is a logo score, but or a low port scoring robot. But the concept of it, yes, is very very sound. Um, yeah, p- part of me every year wants to just build an every bot because it's amazing, and we'd still go to events and still do quite well. <laughs> I mean, I think you say challenge accepted there and do that, Tyler. I mean, that 2020 <laughs> Infinite Recharge reboot's right around the corner, man. There's no reason, uh, you know, not to do it. How awesome would that be? It would, dude, it would it would be incredible. Please. Show up at Districts <laughs> in every bot. And, at least uh, the first one, right? <laughs> at least the first one. Hmm. No doubt. Give you a second to ponder that while we uh, take a few questions from chat. Yeah. Uh, we got a question from Dave Powes who is curious about the amount of prototyping 2056 does. Uh, do you put a lot of effort into prototyping to finding the simple solution, or is it looking a lot at what worked well in the past? Uh, yeah, we do very, very little actual prototyping. Um, really? Yeah, like literally next to none. Um, we mostly just leverage um, previous designs. Um hmm. We're, we're very fortunate. We have this like army of robots that's in our shop all the time that we can go look at. Um, most of them did fairly well in their day. So when we were looking at architectures for a robot this past season, we just rolled 2012 out in front of the kids and we're like, here we go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that, that basic architecture was uh, very simple, worked incredibly effectively, and um you know fit this this game challenge um fairly well you couldn't Um, even shut down the 2012 robot until it got hacked i mean it's just crazy too soon yeah eight (laughs) years ago man i can't bring up the 2016 stuff for you i can't bring up the 2012 i know i know i know 20 i've (laughs) I've been robbed of so many championships it's hard to keep them all straight i'll I'll make you feel i'll uh, I'll post a video of you guys beating us in the uh archimedes finals how's that Oh, those were great matches. Those, <laughs> those were, were so those were good. Awesome matches. They really were. Whenever, whenever I think about 2012, I, I think about those matches, and then the season just ended, and nothing else happened. We all went to IRI, and it was good times. It was. Yes, sir. Um, uh, these are great, great matches. Is this Finals 3? This is Finals 3, yep. Finals 3, yeah. You had. Th- uh, we were up out of auto? We were up out of auto. I keep forgetting that we're blue here. We don't play in blue bumpers very often. Yeah. I can, you know, I can't believe we didn't pick you guys right away. <laughs> you know, it's such is life. So. Yeah. Well, Hot was a good pick. Hot was they, a really were, good pick. They, yeah. Hot, Hot was a great pick, and we wanted, the tri- we wanted to at least try the triple balance, and that's where, where that came from. So now this has now turned into first history reminiscing, by the way. So First uh, history reminiscing. Mars <laughs> Wars, they were, they were a good defender. They were a good defender. We yeah. had to go to the key here. Um. In 10 seconds, 11-14 is going to blow their main breaker. And nobody on our alliance, which, you know, I was on Red Alliance on 2026. None of us noticed, or nobody behind the glass noticed. So, You're sure this is finals two? Yeah, uh, no, finals three. Finals three. Yeah, finals three is, is, finals three is where they were uh, Symbotics uh, tripped. Yeah. Yeah, I'm positive. Oh, I'm just off on my timing, that's all. Yeah. It we says Archimedes match oh. 21, and this is in 240p resolution. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this one's it. Right. Uh, uh, are there any other questions you want to grab from chat while we uh, – Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah it's be you know, <laughs> love hearing you guys reminisce, though. It adds more dimension to this already epic match. Okay, John Haskell coming in from chat. Do you think that you can put too much into RPs since they are irrelevant after quals? Um – Maybe. I mean, you have to be you have to be smart about it. Like if 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 you're chasing an RP that really has like a zero point value associated with it, then um, that's one thing. But most of the time, the RPs have a significant point value associated with them anyway. So they're they're still valuable in elimination rounds. 
Um, when was the last time an RP had no point value associated with it? 2012 co-op bridge? An RP had no point value. I don't know. Um, hmm. But balancing was still hugely valuable in elimination mm -hmm. rounds anyways with the, the triple balance. Um, oh, yeah, thought, well, a rocket in 2019. Um, you could you could really shoot yourself mm, in the yeah. foot trying to chase a rocket in a qualifying match and actually lose. Um, a couple good examples. Um, one of the first rockets I saw completed was at Durham. Um, and... Uh, Two teams ended up, you know, chasing this rocket, trying to get this rocket all finished up, and then lost the match. They got the rocket, but lost the match. So y y you just you got to be smart about it. Um, this was an example of of two teams that were clearly not being very smart about it. But anyways, um, most of the time, controlling your destiny is a better way to win tournaments. Like part of me wants to build that. 2002 baby robot grab all three goals <laughs> hunker down and march across the field like that was so impressive um but they did not seed so um they still won the championship though so i, I can't did. really i can't really fault that um that was an amazing robot and then um, annie baker red carded us so in at iri annie baker more oh 93 more, more history uh, uh, baby, okay. baby pick yeah. 93. All right. Sorry. I know we have a couple yeah. more, co you guys more questions old. last time. We know. <laughs> <laughs> 2002 IRI is before my time. Even like, wow. that's, that's, that's going back. Not a ways. Mine. Shifter 4039 has 2056 thought about whether they will use their 2020 robot next season. If the 2021 games allow game rules, allow unlimited game pieces instead of just five. How do you think top teams will redesign? That's it's kind of a specific <laughs> question there. That is a specific question. Um, I do not think they will allow uh, unlimited game pieces. If they did, this game would be so much better. Um, but I do not think that they will. Um, if they did allow unlimited game pieces, then we would, we would design from scratch. Um, so are you thinking of using your robot from this year next year? I prefer not to comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, valid. There are probably aspects of it that we will we will reuse. The whole the whole what what to do next year is something that that we're going to need to evaluate when things start to open up some more. So like right now, we don't know when we're going to be able to get back in the shop. We don't know whether come September we'll be able to meet as a group. We don't know come dis uh, January if we'll be able to meet as a group. So these are things that we're going to have to evaluate and, and, and come up with a game plan as we, um, as we learn more of the evolving situation. So um, we have some ideas of how things how we will handle things, you know, in, in the best case and in the worst case. So we'll, we'll see is, is kind of the answer. We don't really know just yet. All right. We are going to move on to our community spotlight. And uh, also as well, if you're watching live, we're going to be playing take from fun trivia in just a few minutes. So if you're interested in winning our current jackpot is $70, it keeps going up. No pressure, Tyler, uh, but you will have the opportunity uh, to play trivia against Tyler Holtzman live on air. In order to do that, make sure you join our discord uh, and that is your opportunity uh, to play and join the call in channel queue at this time. There are only uh, five slots. There's only eight total slots. Looks like three of them are already occupied. So get in there. There's five more slots. If you're interested in winning $70 and playing against Tyler and take from fun trivia, we'll draw one of the eight to play in trivia. So we'll be starting that in just a couple minutes. Uh, with that said, we are going to focus on our community shout out for this week and our community shout out, uh, comes from Tanus, uh, Tanus Kakaday from FRC 4828, the Robo Eagles in North Carolina. This is pretty cool. He created a uh, Millennium Eagle Swerve Drive robot out of Connects. Now, I haven't used Connects since I was like, I don't know, 12 or something like that. But it's this is so cool, especially when we get in the video a little bit. Uh, and Audrey, I know you watch this too, but like, Watching Swerve Drive on a Connect frame and watching this all activate is really awesome. What do you think? Dude, it's insane. The man built a scissor lift. It's hard <laughs> enough to build a scissor lift in real life, much less out of Connects. Yeah, <sighs> no kidding. 
Um, we did uh, uh, did talk to uh, uh, Tanush a little bit and said uh, he said that since quarantine started, I realized that this was the perfect opportunity as school is also over. I then went on to, uh, to create my own Connects replica of the Millennium Eagle, which is their 2020 robot. Uh, since I don't own any motors uh, myself and was limited on parts, I had to work with what I had. Uh, Tanush, this is very well done. And when she sees this thing moving, this is so cool. Uh, and I love just to see the ingenuity uh, out of this as well, too. So. Uh, don't forget if you do have any community shout out, uh, don't forget to tag us at first updates now or send us a message on social and discord and, and just watch this thing move. Like I love it. Tyler, what do you think of this? Um, it's a scissor lift. It's cool, <laughs> but it's, it's a out of connect. So I know in a sword drive, there's two things that, you know, I'm not a big fan of. All right. You gotta do more one than press. You gotta do more than press the holds. So, <laughs> uh, really cool. Once again, don't forget to take us at first updates now, or send us a message on social or Discord if you're interested uh, in having your uh, feature on here. Uh, last week uh, featured uh, uh, Adrian Emerson uh, for getting the uh, Air Force Teacher of the Year in the state of Texas. We love to see things like that in there as well. All right. With that said, we are going to play Take from Fun Trivia coming up here. So once again, uh, we're going to draw in just a minute uh, somebody from the call-in channel queue, but let's go over the rules before we do that. Once again, this is your chance to win $70 in Take From Fun Trivia. It goes up $10 every single time uh, that our uh, guest wins. So once again, Tyler, keep on winning. We want to see the jackpot keep going up more and more. So with that said, here's what you need to do. Uh, we're going to have five questions uh, for you to answer. Uh, we're going to have our guest go first. During that time, Tyler will take off his headphones. You're going to go through and answer those questions as quickly as possible because our tiebreaker is time. Um, so if you are that person who wants to try to look stuff up on the internet, we'll know you're doing it. Trust me. So, uh, so make sure once again, uh, you go as quickly as possible. You can say pass and we will come back uh, to your answer. However, the second time you say pass, that is what we have to take. Or if you say, I don't know. So whatever your first answer is, is what we'll take uh, as we play take from fun trivia. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, find a caller here. And we're going to be taking caller number three. That's Reese. Uh, so we'll be jumping in in just a second. Caller number three is Reese. Reese, are you there? Hi, Reese. Good, man. How are you? Awesome. So we're going to ask Tyler to take off his headphones here as we... Uh, are going to start beginning take from fun trivia. Are you ready to play? Do you know the rules? All right. It's just a second here. I'm going to just try to crank you up just a little bit on the audio and we'll see what we can do uh, from that as I know as it comes in just a little bit quiet. Oh, not your fault at all, man. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. I'm already going to yell that from chat, even though I already said something. So yeah, that's all right. That one more time here. One second, everybody. I'll get it right. Hold on. All right, let's try that once again. Are you there? Yep. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. Ah, perfect. All right, your time it begins then in three, two, one. In the acronym FIRST, what does F stand for? Uh, four. 2056 and 1114 have won together more than any other pairs of teams out there. How many successful team-up wins do they have? Uh, 24. In what year was Dean Kamen born? Pass. Name one of the first core values. Path. Located in the western part of Canada, which city is considered Hollywood North? Uh, uh, let's go with like Toronto or something. That's a city. <laughs> All right, we'll come back uh, to what you had then. Uh, in what year was Dean Kamen born? We'll go uh, 1964. And name one of the first core values. Um, inspire. And time. All right. How'd you feel you did? 
Uh, I, I know I got, I feel pretty good about two, but the the rest, the other ones are pretty, pretty rough, pretty rough. <laughs> I, I just want to clear that in, uh, for the 2056 11 14 question, what was your answer for that? And how many times they teamed up? I believe it was 24. 24. Just want to make sure we have that. All right. All right. Is it okay All if right. I look it up? I want to see how close that was. What's that? Is it okay if I look it up to see how well, close You can. Was? We'll be uh, going over them in just a second. Otherwise, we'll give Tyler okay, a big okay, wave okay. and see if he comes back. And we're going to put you on hold here. Stand by. All right. All right, Tyler. So, Reese, uh, who called in, thinks he did okay. Okay. So, we'll see, uh, we'll see what that means uh, for you. Are you ready? I sure am. All right. Your time begins in three two one in the acronym first what does f stand for f yep in the acronym first what does f stand for four 2056 and 1114 have won together more than any other pairs of teams in first how many successful team up event wins do you have together uh official events or unofficial events uh whatever's listed in the blue alliance 18 in what year was dean came and born Ooh. Uh, Dean would be. Uh. 1949. Name one of first core values. Teamwork. Located in the western part of Canada, which city is considered Hollywood North? Vancouver. And time. All right, let's bring Reese back in here. All right. Tyler, how'd you feel you did? Uh, these, the Dean's year is a total guess. That is, yep. Um, and for that one, we're actually going to take uh, the closest uh, for that as well. Uh, okay. So we'll go through these together. We'll see, Reese, if you're going to win $70 or if Take From Fun Trivia, we'll move on to next week for $80. Uh, I love you. Questions. In the acronym first, what does F stand for? Reese said four. Tyler said four. Those are both correct. Easy enough. Now the, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna respond. The reason why that I asked this is that uh, I help run the First Robotics Facebook group, and that is one of the questions that's asked in order to enter the group. And about forty percent of people do not get that correct, uh, which is absolutely insane. Uh, by the way, so so I, I wanted to, I wanted to make sure I wasn't crazy or anything like that. All right. What do they question. say it stands for? What's that? Like just like first, what do they say it stands for? Uh, uh, founder is a very popular one for some reason. So hmm. yeah, founder inspiration and recognition. <laughs> yeah, come there's, on. There's a bunch of weird things uh, on this. Uh, so uh, next uh, question: Twenty fifty six on fourteen have won together more than any other pairs of teams. How many successful team up wins do they have together? Uh, Reese said twenty four, and Tyler said eighteen. Eighteen is correct. Two to one. Uh, let's just say I was including unofficial events. How about it's that? It's at least 100. <laughs> uh, in what year was Dean Kamen born? Uh, you said 1965, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, or 64, something okay. like that. Okay. Um, said 6564, and Tyler said 49. 1951 is the closest. Three to one for Tyler. Two years. Uh, name one of first core values. Uh, Reese said, insp said pass and then inspire. Tyler said teamwork, and they are discovery, innovation, impact, inclusion, teamwork, and fun. Four to one uh, for Tyler. Uh -oh. And uh, last question, located in the western part of Canada, what city is considered Hollywood North? Uh, Reese said Toronto, unfortunately not in the western part of Canada. Uh, <laughs> and Tyler said Vancouver. Vancouver is correct. Uh, five to one. That Wow, a clean sweep. Yeah. And Tyler takes it. Reese, unfortunately, <laughs> not not a winner this time. But thanks for playing, That's man. Okay. Appreciate That's it. That's okay. I enjoyed it. Thanks, brother. <laughs> take, take care. One. Well, Tyler, you, with you winning, that means we're going to go up to eighty dollars uh, in our next uh, trivia contest on there. So, uh, thanks for playing with that. Uh, before we take off, anything else that you want to talk about promote uh, for twenty fifty six? Um fall conference we'll have to see how she goes we uh we talked about it a bit uh a bit earlier on um quick shout out to our sponsors on 2056 uh vex pro huge huge support can't thank them enough um amazing products thank you very much vex pro shout out to all the team ifi teams um that's a cool group of people to be a part of no doubt man 
So awesome. Well, thank you so much, Audrey. Thank you so much as well, too, for uh, coming on and being a fantastic uh, co-host uh, here on Fun. What's going on with you? Sure thing. I'm up here in New Hampshire. I'm doing an internship with Charge Concepts where I'm doing biomedical device research and implementation and design for that. So it's going pretty well this summer. Love to see it. Don't forget to continue uh, uh, watching fun. Once again, uh, FRC Recap Weekly is uh, live on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. We have a bunch of other great fun content for you. So don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, on Chief Delphi as well, too. Uh, love to have you join us uh, in our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Big thanks to everybody who helped out with subscriptions, tips, and bits live. And don't forget that this is now on podcast. So you can download this, both just headlines only and the entire show now available on podcast on pretty much any platform that you so choose. You can get the RSS on our Discord. So on behalf of Audrey Tyler and myself, love, thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate you guys being with us. We'll see you next time on Fun. Talk to you then. Good night. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.